speak to us in this awesome day, day in which the God who was dreaming about you, even before you entered your mother's womb, planned for you, for your life to change, for your life to get a whole new perspective on things, so that you'll be on the road to become a perfect man, a complete man, in the image of Jesus Christ. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, this morning as I share from your word on the subject of a complete man to these wonderful young people from the Baptist Church all across our Twin Cities, I pray the Holy Spirit will help me. As my friend John said, Lord, this will be an entire waste of time if we do not hear the voice of the Holy Spirit reminding us of the Holy Word of God directly relevant for this generation, the Google generation. Fill my mouth with worthy stuff and nudge me when I've said enough. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. When I was in college, uh, there was this particular professor and all of us got together and we decided to give him a name. So this particular professor never completed the course. And the first chapter was his favorite, so you'll spend days and weeks and sometimes months on the first chapter of the course. So we call him the complete man, taking that phrase from the Raymond's advertisement, the complete man. He never completed the course, we call him complete man. From the classroom, let's move to the cricket field. Hyderabad's uh, legendary cricketer VVS Lakshman once made a statement which made went this way. He said, Divilliers is the most complete batsman in the modern era. And he said, for every ball that he faces, he can play it three or four different ways and all of those ways will be entertaining, it will be superb, it will be awesome. And if you're an Indian cricket fan like how like I am and like my son is and, and I'm sure several of you are, you would like to say Virat Kohli is a complete batsman. I will say not so fast. Now, uh, there was a time when uh, he made, him announced himself in the year 2012, first time in the international arena as a match winner for India in our ODI. 
మరియు వన్ డే ఇంటర్నేషనల్లో ఆయన మరి ఇండియాకు మ్యాచ్ విన్నర్ బ్యాట్స్మెన్ గా తను తాను ప్రకటించుకున్నాడు ఇండియా నీడెడ్ టు చేస్ త్రీ హండ్రెడ్ అండ్ ట్వంటీ వన్ రన్స్ in 40 overs to stay in a tournament it was a tri series india australia and sri lanka and virat kohli made 133 in lightning speed and he helped india reach the target mari india sri lanka australia ee tri series jarutunna match lo india varu mari 129 parugulu 29 parugulu chese aa samayamlo endukante aa tournament lo undalante aa run cheyali aa ఆట గెలవాలి అయితే విరాట్ కోహ్లీ నూట ముప్పై మూడు పరుగులను చేసి భారత దేశాన్ని గెలిపించాడు సో ఆన్ ఫిబ్రవరి ట్వంటీ ఎయిట్ టూ థౌసండ్ ట్వెల్వ్ హీ హిట్ దట్ వన్ ట్వంటీ త్రీ అండ్ ఈ సెట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ అరైవ్ ఇన్ ద ఇంటర్నేషనల్ స్టేజ్ మరి అంతర్జాతీయ ప్రదేశంలో మరి నేను కూడా ఒక బ్యాట్స్మెన్ స్థాయిని నేను సంపాదించుకున్నాను అని ఆయన ఒక వ్యాఖ్యానం చేశాడు బట్ ఇన్ ద సేమ్ ఆస్ట్రేలియా వెర్ ఇండియా వెర్ చేసింగ్ ద సేమ్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ టార్గెట్ త్రీ ట్వంటీ నైన్ టు బి ప్రిసైజ్ ఇన్ ద వరల్డ్ కప్ సెమీఫైనల్ వర్సెస్ ఆస్ట్రేలియా విరాట్ కోహ్లీ యు నో మేడ్ అ సింగిల్ డిజిట్ స్కోర్ and he failed when india needed him the most to hit a unbeaten 150 and take india past 329 that's when he failed mari india varike ati avasaramaina samayamlo ade score 329 chestunna samayamlo australia tho gele aatade samayamlo mari single digit and double digit runs kuda cheyaleka i owed to be a player he was not complete he had he had to come he had to you know do something little extra to become like a ms dhoni who can play in the world cup final and then hit that match winning score and take india to a world cup victory after 28 years inkanta avasaram ayyadu batting lo pratibha endukante ms dhoni laga finals lo match winning score ni gotti mari india gathu gelpichinattuga aayina inka pravartinchavalsindiga undi now from the cricket field i want to come to god's word and i want you to look into your word the word of god very carefully because this passage will tell us the process by which each one of us here will become a complete man mari cricket ayo the field nundi ayo the aalochana nundi manam andaru kuda devan vakyam nundi vartham ikkada manam chadavothunna lekhana bhagam kabatti manam andaru kuda em grahinchukuntunnam ante sampurna purushu avuta ela ఒక వ్యక్తి ఒక మగ పిల్లలతో సంపూర్ణ పురుషుడిగా ఎదగవచ్చు అన్న మాట మనం నేర్చుకుంటాం ఇన్ సెకండ్ తిమతి చాప్టర్ 3 వర్సెస్ 16 అండ్ 17 టర్న్ యువర్ బైబుల్స్ మరి మీ బైబిల్ ని తెచ్చినట్లయితే రెడవ తిమతి రాష్ట్ర పత్రిక మూడవ అధ్యాయం 16వ వచనము 17వ వచనము రెండు వచనాలలో ఈ మాటలు ఉంటాయి ఇఫ్ యు హావ్ యువర్ బైబుల్స్ అండ్ ఐ బిలీవ్ యు హావ్ టర్న్ టు దోస్ వర్సెస్ బికాజ్ వాట్ ద వర్డ్ ఆఫ్ గాడ్ సేస్ ఇస్ ఫార్ మోర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ then even my interpretation of it mari devu vaakyamulu chese maatale nenu cheppe vyakyanam undante devu maatalu chaala pramukhyamaina and whatever i say this next one hour or so will be straight from this book which i hold in my hand mari ichu oka ganta paiga ovela nenu maatladthe nenu yedi maatladna kuda mari neruga ee vaakyamulu unde untayi it says you know all scripture is breathed out by god and profitable for teaching for reproof for correction for training in righteousness so that the man of god may be complete equipped for every good work mari lekhanamlo ila rayabaddi daivajanulu sanhadudai prati sankaryamulaku poornamuga poornamuga siddhapadi undunattu daivaveshu vanna kaligina prati lekhanamu upadesha here apostle paul inspired by the holy spirit inspired by the holy spirit says that to become a complete man your life and my life should be in line with the written word of god the holy bible and at the start of this you know talk i want you to tell god lord i want my life to be in line with the written word of god help me speak to me from your word i am open i say like little samuel speak lord your servant is listening mari nenu baalane samuel chesinatuga 
Now it will take me maybe a week's time to take you through all the main things the Bible talks about in order to, for you to make a complete man. So I will not do that. But when I went to God in prayer, preparing for the session with fasting and with walking and talking with my God, He urged me to talk about three areas in which we need to be complete men or be in the process to be complete men. And the first area is sexual purity. Billy Graham and he's perhaps the greatest fully human gift the Baptist church has given Christendom. Okay, they call him the greatest Christian after Apostle Paul man uh, who is now with Jesus said win the battle against sex you win the battle of your life and if you lose the your battle against sex you lose the battle of your life apostle paul wrote about sexual purity in many of his letters to the early church your three verses from the book of Romans, Romans 1 16 and in right close to that in Romans chapter 1 verse 24 onwards Apostle Paul says therefore God gave them over to the sinful desires of their heart to sexual impurity for the degrading of the bodies with one another Romans 1 24 now that verse tells me that if your life and my your life and my life does not you know follow what what God wants us to do with our personal sexual life and we remain in secret sexual sin stubbornly there will come a point in our life it is very scary to think and if we are stubbornly holding on to those sins God will give us up and then from that that point on it's only eternal hell Now, having said those words, I want you to listen to me very carefully when I talk about, give you in nutshell, what God expects us as men, you know, how we must behave sexually, especially as single people. We understand that it was God who made sex. Then 
the director of the movie rx 100 or director of the movie arjun reddy he didn't create sex but your heavenly father created sex he created it for procreation first the bible says king david understood that he had 20 children 19 boys and one girl 20 children king david had king david had 20 children and uh, if he had two more, we could, he could have had a cricket match inside the house in the main hall. And not just for procreation, the Bible says God created it for pleasure. Sex was created for pleasure between the husband and the wife in their private times of intimacy. My this book which I hold in my hand in Proverbs chapter 5 18 19 and 20 there's one phrase there the Bible says it frankly and I will say it frankly it says to the young husband may your wife best satisfy you always and give you great delight it was all going great till one man showed up in the scene his name was Lamech and God wanted sex to be something private between one husband and his only wife but he wanted to abuse God's great gift of sex In Genesis 4 19 the Bible says Lamech called his wife Ada come here Zillah come here and my preacher friend said Lamech had wives A to Z A for Ada Z for Zillah he had wives A to Z Now we are talking about the possibility of Rishabh Pant given his test debut in the next match with the given the failure of the Indian openers in England will Rishabh Pant be India's new test batsman you know Lamech was the opening batsman in the long line of batsmen and you and I are part of that lineup part of that batting lineup which abused God's gift of sex and we are part of that batting lineup how do we abuse God's precious gift of sex by lustful meditation or imagining nudity by lust, by, you said, Duke Jaraj, be, be, be practical. Is it wrong when I see a beautiful girl walking down the road and I think she's beautiful? Is that wrong? Nothing wrong, even the 
patriarch's wives were all beautiful Moses wrote the first book of the Bible Genesis and under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit he wrote all the three wives of Abraham all the wives of Abraham Isaac Abraham Isaac and Jacob they were all beautiful Moses wrote that under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit nothing wrong in thinking a woman is beautiful but listen to me carefully I've not completed the sentence But when lust, what is lust? Lust is when your admiration of beauty doesn't stop with admiration of beauty and you look at the person and start stripping that person in the mind. You do what is talked about in Job chapter 31 and verse 1 in the modern translation. One modern translation says, you imagine a woman unclothed. That is lust. Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5 28. Okay, I want to paraphrase and contextualize what he said for the Google generation. He said, you don't need a bed to commit adultery. You don't need a bed and mattress and pillow to commit adultery. All you need is a dirty head. You look at a woman to lust after her. You have already committed the sin of adultery with her. <laughs> That brings us to the second way we abuse God's gift of sex. And this way is actually one of the biggest businesses in the world that brings us to the sin of porn watching. And the Bible has a lot of things to talk about that. <laughs> If you read Leviticus 18 in the King James Version or the New King James Version where it is more of a literal translation, the Bible talks about, you know, uncovering the nakedness of X, uncovering the nakedness of Y, uncovering the nakedness of Z, X, Y, Z is not your wife, but you uncover her nakedness and in verse 26, Leviticus 18, 26, the Bible says that is detestable. That is an abomination in the eyes of God. Ram Gopal Verma told Times of India in 2011, I am 
I'm proud of my porn collection. But if you know the word of God, which I hold in my hand, if you know 2 Samuel chapter 11, where David watched the bath of Bathsheba, and the same chapter says, God was very displeased with David for watching live porn, to use our language, then you will not say, I'm proud of my secret porn collection. I'm going to delete those files. I'm going to quit watching porn with the Holy Spirit helping me with that accountability friend questioning me. Now let's skip over point three and go to point four where it, what is the fourth way in which we abuse God's gift of sex and that is by fondling the upper body of the of that girl who is not yet your wife fondling touching her in intimate places <laughs> The Bible talks about it in Ezekiel 23. There was a time when you grew up in this wonderful Baptist church or the Baptist church that you belong to. You went to Sunday school. Your Sunday school teacher taught you Psalm 23. But now you're a young man. Now you need to hear the truth from God's word according to your age. And the truth of Ezekiel 23 is God was unhappy. God called that act prostitution. The act of fondling the breasts of a woman, not your wife, is prostitution. The Bible talks about it in Ezekiel 23. Check it out. Read it. Now that brings me to a rule which is known world over as the Billy Graham rule. What is this Billy Graham rule? Billy Graham would never get into a locked space, be it a car or a room, with any other person apart from his wife. And he followed it meticulously in, in his decades of ministry. He, and if you read his autobiography, just as I am, he quotes 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 22. The Bible says, flee the evil desires of youth. The other day I was reading a newspaper review of the movie Rangasthalam. And as I was reading this thought came to me, you know, Chitti Babu in that movie might say 
that ranga rangamata or rangamata who she is is my elder sister she's just a elder sister i have a platonic relationship with her so i can get into her room lock the door and lie on her lap no problem she's like a elder sister no that is dangerous that is disobeying second timothy chapter 2 and verse 22 flee the evil desires of you that brings us to the next way we abuse god's gift of sex and uh, that is little you know that is something which the world doesn't want to agree the world says rape is wrong but if i am willing but she is willing and both of them are dreaming about it i am willing she is willing and both of us are dreaming about it what is wrong with having full fledged sex with this girl of mine whom i'm going to marry this colleague of mine in the office the bible says it is sin i say it's sin because i read john 8:11 the words of jesus to the woman caught in adultery go and from now on sin no more sin no more have sex outside of marriage no more when i was watching uh, several cricket matches i guess it was the ipl this fast track ad fast track i think it was for a smart watch fast track reflex or it must have been a smart watch this ad came the guy is practicing you know he is exercising and he's doing step ups or step downs or he's doing rigorous physical exercise the girl crosses by and the guy says i need to burn 50 more calories then my routine will be complete my physical activity routine will be complete and i will be fit i need i need to burn 50 more calories and the girl says i can help you burn 50 more calories right now and gives a naughty smile mari i can manage to put a fast track advertisement of the watch that this is from my kitchen also advertisement of the bro advertisement no oka purushu bro mari exercise chestu tana kuntunna aa kovu padarthalu vaatini kaliginchukone prayatnamlo prayasamlo tano mari aa exercise chestu untaga aa pakka nunde oka stri velanamlo chusadu chustu nenu inta my friend let me tell you for the world having sex outside of marriage may be just a matter of burning 50 calories but you who know the word you who have read the book of revelation you have read revelation 21 7 and 8 you understand sex outside of marriage puts you in a danger of not just burning 50 calories but going to that lake of fire which burns forever and forever because in that sinless found in revelation 21 7 there is sexual immorality mari ప్రపంచానికి లైంగికంగా సెక్స్ లో పాల్గొనడం తప్పు కాకపోవచ్చు కానీ దేవుని వాక్యం ఎరిగిన మీరు 
ఆ ప్రపంచానికి అయితే యాభై కిలోలు లేకపోతే యాభై క్యాలరీస్ పరిగించిన విధంగా కనపడవచ్చు కానీ మనకు అది కాదు మనము అలా లైంగికంగా అపవిత్రతలు పాల్గొనడమో మనలో నిత్య అగ్నిలో పారవేస్తుంది అన్న మాటలు ఆ ప్రకటన గ్రంథం ఇరవై ఒకటి వర్గాన్ని ఏడు ఎనిమిది వర్షాలలో కీలక రాయబడి అలా కేవలం యాభై క్యాలరీస్ కాదు నిత్య జీవమును కాలుకునే ఉండవలసింది అన్న మాటలు రాయబడుతున్నాయి How many of you have got the Bibles with you, your Bibles? Can I ask you to do something as I am led by the Holy Spirit to ask you to do it? Can I challenge you to turn to the last page of your Bible? Can I ask you to take your pen? And can, you, can I ask you to write something on the last page of your Bible? this i will wait till marriage for sex from this day on with the help of the holy spirit and sign your name can you write start writing right now I am challenging you to do it. From this day onwards, from this day onwards, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I will wait till my marriage to have sex. And then sign your name. And put the date. 15th August 2018. and then swap the bible with the person sitting next to you and he will sign the the witness signature so his your friend will put the witness signature you know in these years of youth ministry i received calls you were there in my school duke and you preached about it and i wrote this chastity pledge there were many temptations but god helped me think about that day when i wrote this and i pole vaulted over those temptations by the power of jesus and i entered my marriage as a virgin i have received those testimonies anega yavanasta anega samudraya yavanasta mandira parichay dejasu anega ki sakshi lo vidina vada sakshi lo yavanante a sarmenu manchachukochi ee visham agurichalu aa dinamandu mai ee maatalanu me vrasi mevo santuka pettamu ఆ విషయము మాకు ఎంతో సహాయకరంగా ఉంది అనేక పర్యాయాలు మేము శోధనలో ఉంటే కానీ మేము వాటన్నిటి దేవుని యొక్క శక్తి వల్ల యేసు ప్రభు యొక్క శక్తి వల్ల అనుభవించి మరి పవిత్రంగా వివాహంలో పాల్గొనడానికి మాకు సహాయపడ్డారు that brings me to the last way i am going to talk about there are more ways that's why i've given you those notes the last way we commonly abuse as men as we as men and i'm sure even the ladies even abuse god's gift of sex and that is by masturbation by self stimulation self stimulation uh, you can i think you can say self stimulation or uh, yeah you can yeah you can use the same word okay uh, the last way the chivariga mana mana anugrahinchabadina devuni yoga a lainiga varamu yelavu durvini yoga kastamo oka pushlaina sreelaina masturbation dwara you know youth preachers like me are compelled to speak about these topics i mean i used to speak about it all the time you know i w- i used to put up videos on what the bible teaches about sex and those days when you google search those vi- i mean you youtube those videos youtube search those videos my video will be there and maybe one or two and then all the rest is porn thank god the times have changed people are talking about it and we need to talk about these things you know we need to talk about it frankly but you know what these days it is the female actresses of our time i'll give you a couple of names uh, I, i know kaira adwani swara baska kaira and swara female bollywood actresses they are talking about masturbation and it's high time we talked about it and had a frank discussion about it in the light of the written word of god మాట్లాడుతూ వచ్చేసి కొన్నిసార్లు నా విషయాలు అంటే నా నా సందేశాలు 
Though the Bible is silent on this subject, the Bible talks about sex, man with animals, Bible talks about homosexuality, calls it a sin. You know, the Bible does not directly refer to masturbation, but that doesn't mean the Bible encourages us as believers to masturbate so that we can relieve ourselves of built up sexual tension. No, the Bible does not encourage us to do that. Now, I want you to turn your attention to 1 Corinthians 7 9, which I believe helps us understand what God would think about masturbation because 1 Corinthians 7 9, the Bible says it is better to marry than burn with passion. Now, if masturbation was a God approved way of relieving built up sexual tension, very common with men especially, the Bible could have very well said there, it is better to masturbate than burn with tension. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says it is better to marry than burn with, than burn with tension, sexual tension. So, the Bible discourages the use of masturbation as a way of relieving yourself. So 1 Corinthians 7 9 tells us the only guilt free, the only totally joyous sex is within the boundaries of marriage and never outside the boundaries of marriage. And let me tell you something else, and this is a married man speaking, married for 17 years. I believe masturbation is wrong in the light of this book which I hold in my hand. Secondly, because masturbation qualifies as lazy sex. Now some of you are thinking, now this has been 35 minutes, when does this preacher stop? And you're thinking, you're thinking you're in a dream world, some of you I'm sure. You're thinking about you'll get married to that girl, pretty girl, and then after marriage you'll have your first night. Now I'm preaching to you God's word in this church, but your mind is already in the first night and what you will do in the first night. Now, but the day you get married within a few hours, you'll understand 
marriage is not all about celebrating a sequence of first nights together with your wife marriage is something else totally mari vivaha ayinappudu ee kartavaya vishayam emittante anni first nights celebrate cheyakunda jarukodam kaadu ani vivaha ante inga edo undi anna sangeetha meeku appartham avutadi you will understand when you get married that fulfilling marriage sex begins with breakfast don't get dirty ideas breakfast in the sense you go to the kitchen while your wife is preparing coffee for you and give her a non sexual hug non sexual hug you hold her hand you look into her eyes you spend time with her and when you're in the office you call her five times seven times and then when over dinner you you know you don't give one line answers when she asks you how was your day you talk about your day you make loving long deep meaningful conversations and then when you retire to bed that night she might offer her body to you and you might have sex but when she does that is the blessed sex that is the guilt free sex and that is the totally joyous sex that is hard work conversations god designed them to actually get aroused through the ear gate and god designed men to get aroused through the eye gate so man can get on get turned on quickly but you know god wanted this romance and back and forth to go on and the climax of this long romance is sex and when sex happens that time that's when it's earth shattering that's when it's totally joyous my uh but masturbation you know doesn't require any of this hard work and that's why it's so easy to lock yourself in the room and take a pillow and masturbate or watch porn and masturbate but that is that displeases god there is a whole lot of verses in the bible especially in proverbs that talks against laziness god is against laziness and masturbation is lazy sex and because that is so we should get, get the help of the holy spirit get in touch with an accountability friend who will ask you when was the last time you looked at porn and masturbated so that we can quit this habit with the help of the holy spirit all together mari andukane masturbation tappani nenu cheptunnanu arigatte gadalu kele reethulu vaduthunna ramata edana nagra chitrani tulsi meeru tulsi pogatamo saala sunuga undochukani adi sampurnamaine adi devuki isthadayakamaine kaadu devudu dani తాడు అయితే వైకపు నాయకుడు అనేక వచనాలను నేను చూపించగలను అయితే మన పరిశుద్ధ ఆత్మ సహాయం వల్ల వీటిని విడిపించుకోవాలి అంటే వాటి నుండి తొలగిపోవాలి అవసరమైతే మనము ఆ లెక్క అపజెప్పుకొని ఒక స్టేజ్ ని కలిగి ఉండాల వాయి మన లెక్క అపజెప్పల అపజెప్పగలగా లెక్క వారి మన అడగగలగా ఆ చివరి సారి నేను ఎప్పుడు చూసావో ఎప్పుడు చేసావో అని వారి మన లెక్క అడిగేటట్టుగా మనం ఎలా 
The Holy Spirit is speaking to you. You are saying, the Holy Spirit is saying, you have disobeyed God and violated His word when it comes to sexual purity. And the Holy Spirit says, repent, repent. Would you respond to that voice right now? He himself bore our sins on his body when he hung on that cross. We read in Peter, when Jesus hung on the cross, he himself bore our sins, our, our sins on his body. His body was sinless, but our body was full of sexual sin and other sin. But he took our sin on his body and he died for us on the cross. Would you tell him right now, Jesus, I'm repenting of that sin. Thank you for offering your sinless, sexually pure body for my sake on the cross. Right now, I'm coming back to you. Would you do that by kneeling down right where you are between the pews right now? I am not done with my session. I have I will speak for another 15 minutes, but I want you to do that right now. The Holy Spirit is asking me to do that. You know, right now, pull the net so that the young people right now listening to me can make a commitment to Jesus right now. Cleanse me with your blood, Lord. The blood you shed for me on the cross. I repent of my sin. I put my faith in you. You who died for me on the cross. I accept me. Cleanse me. Forgive me. Would you say this prayer after me right now? Those of you who are kneeling, if you know English, you can repeat after my English a statement. If you want to wait for the Telugu translation, please repeat after the Telugu translation. Dear Lord Jesus, yes, repeat, those who are kneeling down. Dear Lord Jesus, please forgive me. Wash me of every sin. Wash me of every sin. Please forgive me. You died for me on the cross. Your pure body took on itself my sin, my sexual sin. Thank you. From this day onwards, I will live for you. Help me, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Now in the next uh, 10 or 15 minutes, Ten, five minutes? Yes. The next five minutes uh, we have, I want to mention area two and three and leave you to do some self-study.
So to become a complete man, we need to be sexually pure, enabled by the Holy Spirit with the help of an accountability friend. Secondly, to be a complete man, we need to please God in every stage of our life as a man. Samuel's mom Hannah, when he was a little baby, gave him back to the uh, priest Eli and and he, she said, so now I give him to the Lord for his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. His whole life my little boy Samuel will serve Jesus. So the stage of your whole life, I want to just talk, talk about three stages quickly. Your teen life. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians, obey your parents in the Lord. So when your mommy and daddy ask you to do something, obey them, do not delay obedience. Do not make them repeat something. For example, she asked you to buy milk. Don't let her make her say that five times. The moment she says, son, get me milk, you go to the milk parlor and without looking at click bus, you can get back. And you don't do what you see in the click bus ad, you don't throw the milk at your mommy when she's in the kitchen. And then when you are in your twenties, now that is some, that is a time when uh, you will be deciding about your marriage. The Bible through the example of Solomon, through the example of Samson, and the example of several others warns us that we must not get married to unbelievers. First Corinthians 7.39 says, you can marry anyone. But only in the Lord. That is the only non-negotiable, unchangeable condition God puts. That, so be careful, very careful there in your 20s. Don't act smarter than God. I'll give you an example how you can be smarter than God. So don't say I will fall in love with this beautiful girl in my corporate office working with me in my corporate office and I will share the gospel with her and I will lead Bible study you know we will go uh, uh, there and there here and there and I will we will study Bible and I will convert her then I will get married to, and you know I will convert her and then get married to her Acts 28 is the is a textbook for missionary strategy, evangelism strategy. Not one chapter, not one passage, not one verse talks about God asking you to fall in love with the unbeliever, share the gospel, then get married to her. Don't act smarter than God. And 
And then when you are in your thirties, you will God will have given you some children, and you need to be a responsible parent. The Bible says, use the rod when it comes to parenting. In Proverbs, use the rod. The Bible doesn't say give the iPad and parent. Your your child is crying. Give iPad. Your, your baby is crying. Give the phone. The Bible says you you must give something, and that is whack. We must give a whack with the stick, not the iPad. So follow biblical ways of parenting when you are in the thirties. And in the final, final, the final area of being a complete man is your church life, is your church life or your sanctuary life. You know, in your church life, learn to be someone who contributes and not be someone who cribs about everything. Someone who contributes, someone who blesses others. Don't be the someone who cribs and criticizes everything. John F. Kennedy, former U.S. president, said, "Ask not what the country can give give to you. Ask what you can give for the country." I would like to tell you, ask what I can give to my local church. Now, my local church. What can I do? Can I lead a Sunday school? Can I lead the youth group? Can I bring people to the youth fellowship? Can I bring people to the church? Can I go on a missionary trip in consultation with my pastor? As a as, through our church, can we go and reach some unreached place? Think of ways of contributing. Don't be criticizing. Don't be cribbing, and don't say the youth fellowship in my church is not good. So I will jump to the other church. Don't do that. Stay right where you are. Stay right where God has placed you, and make a difference. Be a blessing. <laughs> close your eyes right now all eyes closed all heads bowed we have seen three areas in our life where we can be we can pursue we don't become complete now we don't become complete till the return of jesus but we are working towards completion we are working towards perfection enabled by the holy spirit helped by our fellow church believers and brothers and sisters in our christ in in christ now uh, so in, these are the three areas in sexual purity in every stage of our life in our sanctuary life in our church life
Would you lift up your Bible to the heavens? And, and would you tell the Lord, Lord, I want to align my life according to this book which I hold in my hand. I want to. I, tell the Lord right now and God will give you the grace decide to study this book daily so that every day you check am I living according to this book with the help of the Holy Spirit Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for speaking to the men here, the young boys and young women, young men and the here, Lord. Thank you for the young people who committed their life to back to you and dedicated their lives for holy living, for sexually pure living. Thank you for the young people who are saying that every stage of my life, in my teen life, in my 20s, in my 30s, till God keeps me alive, till the second coming of Jesus, every stage of my life I want to glorify Jesus. And Lord, thank you for the young people who are saying, I'm going back to my local church, the local church who sent me to this program, and I'm not going to ask what will the pastor give me or what will the church give me but I'm going to say what can I do with the talents that God has given me with the money that God has given me with the time that God has given me what can I do to give it back to my church so that the kingdom of God will be built and the name of Jesus will be proclaimed to every person in this city and the world who doesn't know Jesus <laughs> In Jesus Christ in my prayer. Amen.